Well, welcome to another segment of Deeper Dive right here at Mount Zion. My name is Pastor Diamond, and I serve as the Associate Pastor of Vision Development and Execution right here at the Mount. And the good news is, listen, you tuned in to the right place at the right time at the right moment for the right word, and we're excited. This Deeper Dive series continues today with part two of Her Story Month. That's what we're calling it for Women's History Month. And listen, we want you to like, share, subscribe, tap in to our YouTube channel. You can follow our bishop at Joseph Walker 3, follow our first lady at Dr. Steph Walker, and then follow us at MT Zion Nashville on all platforms. We want to stay connected with you. As always, when we come into the virtual space, listen, we come with seed in hand, ready to sow seed into fertile ground. I believe today is a good day to sow. Today is a day to sow by faith. The giving options are right here on the screen. We want you to go ahead, sow generously into the ministry as God has been good to us. I know that we all can testify that we may not be where we want to be, but thank God we're not where we used to be. And for that, we give God praise. Listen, this is a special deeper dive. I'm excited, excited to lead it today. We're talking about breaking glass ceilings in the marketplace. It's going to be simply phenomenal. So just buckle in. I'm going to pray and then we're going to go right in to deeper dive. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we know that there's so much going on around us. But today we're taking just a few moments out of our day to grow deeper in your word. Lord, we thank you for the person who sowed seed today, who maybe gave their tithes, their offering. Lord, we pray that you would bless it, that you would multiply. It's in Jesus' name we pray. We say together, put it in the chat. Let's say amen. Let's go ahead and enjoy this discussion. Well, welcome to another segment of Deeper Dive right here at Mount Zion. I'm Pastor Diamond and I serve as Associate Pastor of Vision Development and Execution right here at the Mount. And every week we're dropping content, not just uh, for enjoyment, but for enrichment. And so we're so excited about Bible study. Of course, we're doing it in a different way this month. I hope you enjoyed last week with Pastor Katina and that awesome panel. And this week, we're going to be focusing on her story again, but this is part two. And we're talking about Marketplace. Last week, they focused on ministry, and we have some awesome guests here who will talk about their role in the Marketplace. I'm telling you, we've got some guests that if something happens to this stage, Nashville is in trouble because that's how heavy, that's the heavy hitters that we have. But I will allow them to introduce themselves Themselves. We have uh, Jackie Hayes, we have Tina Taylor, and Dr. Lakita Stribling, who is with us today. So just briefly introduce yourselves, let the people know who you are. Absolutely, Pastor Diamond. Thank you so much, and thank you for the opportunity. I'm Jackie Hayes. I'm the Principal and Chief Marketing Strategist for Koreans and Marketers, which is an inclusive marketing agency connecting our clients with multicultural and multi-generational audiences. Awesome. I am Tina Taylor, and I am owner of Taylor Sanitation. We are located in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Um, we are a solid waste company um, that takes care of processing all of the solid waste from collection, transporting, analyzing, and um, disposing of it. Wow. Well, I'm Lakita Stribling, and I, my day job, I work for a company called Ronstad. We're the world's largest HR solutions provider. And on last week, I celebrated my 28th anniversary. Uh, I'm responsible for a number of business units across two states. Um, and so what we do is we help companies find the employees they need to run their businesses. And we help people who are looking for new and different uh, career opportunities. We uh, seek to help them in making that transition. Wow. Like I said, we have some heavy hitters here. These women are so phenomenal uh, as they're navigating the marketplace. And so today we're just having a, a conversation, right? And going to look at some biblical principles, but talking about the struggles and triumphs of being in the marketplace, being a businesswoman, of what that looks like uh, over the last few uh, years, we've seen kind of the rise of the woman as we have a VP uh, who is a woman uh, and so many others uh, who are just arising like yourselves and just killing the game in their own right. And so I, I kind of want to start this Bible study off because I, I feel bad about my opening story after you guys just said these awesome things that you're doing. But I started off as an entrepreneur. I had a bubblegum machine. 
And it was just a simple bubblegum machine. And that was my first kind of like um, introduction to what it was like to have a business, to have to go get the bubblegum, fill it up. You know, my friends would put quarters in. I would come to school with a bag of quarters. And it really boosted my confidence, right, to see how you could build something and be responsible for something. When you think about the strength of women in the marketplace and women who are in business, uh, I'm reminded of this biblical example. We're going to start it off here and then I'll kind of shift the conversation. But there's a scripture in Acts chapter 16, verses 13 through 15. Uh, and it's about uh, the story of Lydia. And it says, on the Sabbath day, we went out of the city to the riverside where prayer was customarily made. And we sat down and spoke to a woman we met there. Now, a certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was the seller of purple, kind of like what some of us have on today. <laughs> seller, <laughs> a seller of purple, and she and her household were baptized. She begged us, saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house. So she persuaded us. But the thing that I like about this, uh, she was a seller. She was someone who was a business owner. And oftentimes when we think about uh, the Bible, we only think about women in ministry, but there were everyday women who were also uh, in business. And so I just want to ask you guys, what was that first thought? What was that first inkling that came to you all that said, I know that I want to be a business owner or I know that I'm called to the marketplace and anyone can start us off. Well, I just say about your bubblegum machine, never despise <laughs> small beginnings. Yeah. My yeah. first job with Greens Marketers was a $250 uh, check that someone paid me to run an email marketing campaign. Wow. And so I didn't necessarily endeavor to be a business owner, but maybe, maybe so. In the 80s, you remember that movie, Working Girl and... <laughs> Bathing Boom and, and um, Secret of My Success, I, want, I knew I wanted to be in business, but I thought it would be at a big corporate firm and not be at the top of the Batman building or something like that. But uh, when I was studying for my Series 6 test, I was a financial representative. Um, I was studying for that. And so my daughter, who is now 16, she was, you know, kid, she was young, so she wouldn't really let me study the way I needed to study. So I poured out some crayons and markers on the ground to busy her hands. And so I did that so she could play. And I just started thinking about it, crayons and markers, crayons and marketers, because by trade, I am a marketer. But at that time, I had taken a little bit of a, um, a different direction. I was going into financial services, wanted to try, to try something new. But I liked crayons and marketers, and so that's how it started. And so it started as a blog. And so I was just doing small business marketing tips on my blog. And then a friend of mine, she's like, you know, if, if you're going to try to find a job, I was trying to find a full-time job at that time. And she's like, let's turn this crayons and marketers blog into a business. Mm -hmm. I'm so, okay, so we can do that. And so I'm like, if I'm going to do that, I might as well turn it into a real business and go down and get the business license. And I did that, and then it just started to take you know, take on. And I started to really um, sew into the business. But even still then, I wasn't 100% all in. I still had a part-time job. And um, my husband just told me, who is a business owner, he's like, you're either going to do it 100% or you don't need to do it at all. Yeah. And so when your husband, the man who God has put over you, has said, hey, you need to, you can't serve two masters here. So, and I, I put my two weeks notice in the next day and I've been doing it ever since. We've been in, 11, um, in business 11 years this year. Wow, that makes me think of what, what Bishop preaches, this famous sermon, uh, Water Walkers, where you just kind of have that moment where it's like, I'm just gonna step out on faith. That's an amazing story. <laughs> Anyone else care to share about their, their moment? I was gonna say, my, my walk was just a tad bit different. Um, after graduating with a business major, um, I was in some management positions. You know, I worked at a hotel, I did events, um, I managed a gym, um, I did a training for like a big cigarette company. We traveled all over the world. And one day it was just an epiphany that, you know, you're, you're doing all these things, right, that technically an owner or an executive would do, so why not do your own? Yeah. So there was some things that kind of happened. You know, I got displaced as a worker. The company moved to a different state. My mom was sick at the time, so it didn't allow me to make that pivot with the company. And then it was just like, God just gave it to you. You know, so when God lays it in your lap, it's up to you to actually do something with it, right? Um, so when he opened up the window, I just actually walked in and I walked into an industry I knew nothing about. You know, when I walked into the room and you see all these men and they're looking at you like, you're in the wrong place. Or, you know, this isn't where you need to be. What do you know about trash? 
cash. Yeah. And then, you know, when you finally get to the point that you understand the way the business works, it doesn't matter if it's male or female, right? It's mm -hmm. the facts that you put on the table. So that was like a pivoting turning point for me. But also in the same sense that, you know, men didn't realize that or want a woman at the table at that point. Yeah, yeah. So it kind of gives you the drive and the motivation to do a little bit more. Yeah. Oh, we're going to get into that. We're going to get into <laughs> the nitty-gritty of it. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Lakita, did yeah, you want to so share? so I guess I, I'm even coming from a different perspective. I guess for me, I guess I'm at the age now where I can see how the steps were perfectly ordered mm -hmm. in my life, even though growing through them, you don't necessarily see the how the pieces are being orchestrated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I had perfect examples of hardworking business people, successful people, and my mom and dad and my aunts and uncles. Uh, so I actually went to college to be an English teacher. <laughs> wow. Um, and then I thought, well, maybe I'll go to law school. And then I thought, maybe I'll do something in government. Mm -hmm. So while I was trying to figure it out, I went mm -hmm. to grad school. Um, and I ended up, like, I don't know anybody who does what I do who that was their goal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody I know who do what I do happened upon it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that is how I got into doing this whole HR solutions and recruiting and staffing. I happened upon it in an entry-level position. And I found that much of what I had experienced in my observations of seeing my family members and my dad was a serial entrepreneur and, you know, being around the business, uh, I saw that it really gave me a lot of gifts and talent that helped me to excel when I did get landed into corporate America. And I've just had so many opportunities where now I can look back and see how all those things mm -hmm. were supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I'm so glad you guys shared these varying stories because someone may be watching and I think out of all three of the stories or even maybe four, maybe you had a bubblegum machine too, I don't know. <laughs> but out of the three that were shared, I hope that you can see yourself uh, in these women and, and their stories that they're sharing. Uh, you guys hit on some great points and I, I think about this other biblical example, as we kind of examine the struggle that's there, um, this biblical example of Priscilla uh, in Acts chapter 18, verses two through three, it says, and he found a certain Jew named Aquila born in Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, uh, and he came to them. So because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and for occupation, they were tent makers. And so uh, when you think about the fact that, you know, uh, it seems like this was a husband and wife kind of entrepreneurship endeavor that's there. And you go to the Mount Zion app, you'll be able to see the full scripture there uh, in the notes. But it seems like they were working together. And oftentimes uh, I've noticed that when you walk in rooms, Tina, as you shared, uh, sometimes they're expecting, you know, your husband or they're expecting <laughs> yeah. a male or, you know, who's your boss or who's that? And it's like, no, I'm here to be the person that's speaking on behalf <laughs> of this. And even as I've matriculated in my my role in my job, I've, I've faced that. Um, I think about even uh, there's a documentary, I won't say who it's about, but it's a kind of famous documentary that has come out in uh, early 2024, well, no, late 2023. Uh, the person went on tour, mm -hmm. a world tour, and uh, you can pick up what I'm putting down. <laughs> but uh, was watching the documentary, and she was talking about working with all of these different, you know, guys and even in women, and she says she got sick of people telling her what, was, what wasn't possible, knowing that even as a woman, she had done the research, she had, you know, put in the time, she had put in the sweat equity and just sitting there listening to someone saying, this isn't possible, uh, knowing that it is. Can you all talk about those challenges, just the struggles uh, that you face maybe in boardrooms or even when you're uh, doing negotiations and things like that and people kind of think that you're going to sit back and just kind of Watch. Now, I, I know that I have a, a, a strategy. I'll sit there and listen to you. And while you're listening, in the back of my mind, I put A plus, you know, one plus two doesn't equal three. Mm -hmm. So can you just talk to us about that, those moments, those struggles that you faced um, in those those moments? Uh, well, you know, and I grew into that, you know, yes. and so starting starting in business, you're a little bit timid at first. Yeah. You, know, you take jobs that you probably shouldn't take because you need to you need the revenue to grow your firm. But as I've 
matriculated in business and I've grown and I've been around um, amazing mentors like Dr. Lakita Stribling and other late leaders in my life, I've found my voice and yeah. it's a very loud voice at this point in business. <laughs> um, and I know my worth, you know, and it, it takes getting to that point that you know your worth, you know that your, val your value that you bring to the marketplace and you refuse to accept anything less. Yeah. And so we have clients all over the country. And so a lot of times uh, when they first meet me, because I'm, I'm kind of, you know, petite and I, and I come in and people say I sound pretty young on the phone and then they meet me and they're like, Jackie? I was like, yes, that's, that's me. Um, or have to, I go in rooms, I serve on a national board, and, and that allows me to be around a lot of corporations and, and executive staff um, at these firms. And they're still, you know, like, Jackie, is that you? I mean, and so I still get that, that moment in which people are first get over my, my visual identity, right? That um, I look kind of young. I think I'll take that as long yes, as I can. Yes, it. yes, uh, yes, yes. But, so I have to contend with that. But I was like, well, you know, at the, at the end of the day, I'm a business owner and I employ five people, you mm -hmm. know, total, including myself. Um, we're in business over, you know, six figure firm and we're striving toward a million yeah. because that's important because only 2% of women owned firms hit a million dollars. Wow. And it is a, fraction of a percentage for black women owned firms. Wow. And so I look at that as a tremendous opportunity to do this for us mm -hmm. because as I do this and people know me, I take everybody with me, mm -hmm. you know, and then I'm, I'm reaching behind me as I climb. And I think that's important that as we get into these spaces and people are underestimate us when we get there, that we, we come in with our, our voice, our authentic self, and we don't, um, we don't try to meld into who people think we should be. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, we come in as we as we are, mm -hmm. and then we take everybody with us. Mm -hmm. That is so vital that we don't get the win for ourselves and leave everybody else hanging. Yeah, for sure. Um, to piggyback off what Jackie said, I think it's important that we empower each other. Mm -hmm. And it is intimidating, I will say that. Um, it's intimidating, and then I think it's also anxiety hits. You know, if you're if you're in a male-dominated society, um, especially if you're brand new and breaking into the market, it's it's all of those things, right? But I'm a firm believer that we have to stand on the word of God, right? Yeah. And we have to know that we are daughters of the King, and we do not have a deadbeat daddy. And he, what He has given us, He will fulfill, mm -hmm. right? But we have to stand flat-footed, and we have to go forward with that. Um, I also believe that it's very important that, you know, not only youth or young people, but it's important that they see people that look like them because then that gives them, the, right, the, the thought that they can be, mm -hmm. right? They don't have to be just this or just that. They can own their own or they can be whatever it is that they want to be. And I think, unfortunately, women are underrepresented in that aspect, right? So then we have some of this next generation that settle for something because we're not speaking with our loud voice. Yeah. Um, but it's very important that we reach back. It's very important that we mentor. It's very important that we help this next generation get to where we've actually broke some glass ceilings ourselves. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, for, for me, it's been, uh, I think, in looking back, because again, when you're growing through it, you don't, you don't necessarily see, see everything that's happening, <laughs> mm -hmm. particularly your own personal and professional development. Sometimes you take some of those advances for granted. And I think uh, my experience has been you have to have the highest level of confidence, yeah, uh, self-awareness. And for me, one of the things that I did was I would always self-assess. Yeah. What, what are my true gifts? Those things that I do really well without a whole lot of effort. Mm -hmm. And then what are those things that I don't do so well? And so for me, I would always spend time working on those things that I believed yeah. I needed to work on. I always felt like if somebody else came and pointed it out to me, it was kind of too late. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I also realized that I had to be open to feedback because we all have blinders. Mm -hmm. So those things I could see, I took responsibility and ownership and worked on those things. But I was always open to feedback for those blind spots. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think it's also important to surround yourself with other strong women. Yeah. Um, and I remember moving here and I asked this lady, I was in awe with her. She was a prominent leader in the community. And I remember asking her about joining this particular organization. 
And she said, well, you haven't done anything. You're not going to get in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now I realize that could have hurt my feelings. Yeah. But I'm so glad I was open that I sat in that. And I said, she's right. So I got busy mm -hmm. yeah. doing the things that I needed to do to accomplish that goal. And fortunately, it became a rea reality. So I think sometimes we may look for things externally yeah. mm -hmm. and from other people where there's a whole lot of work we can do right with ourselves. You know, you got to be prayerful and ask God to yes. show himself in you because uh, that's important. You have to surround yourself with people who you uh, feel secure in their feedback and their wisdom and their advice. And then you just got to spend a lot of time with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's real. And it, it's so funny what you shared. I remember even being new in Nashville and I'm always kind of self-assessing as well as it pertains to strategy. And uh, a lot of what I do is blessing others and helping people. And I remember actually reaching out to you uh, <laughs> on a Zoom like, hey, I need your help in this area. And I think a lot of times, uh, as you said, having faith, but also listening, self-reflection. What can I do better? What can I do well? And then not being offended by the feedback, right? right? Mm -hmm. Because it only makes you better. I'll never forget uh, when I was starting off in ministry, I know this is about marketplace, but uh, people think that I'm a, a, a great speaker or preacher or what have you. But I remember those red marks in my sermon, just <laughs> just scratching them like, oh, this is just horrible, you know, and it, it helped me to grow. But I want to focus on this scripture because th this this uh, conversation is really helping me, even as you guys are sharing. But Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Uh, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shall be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. And also, and and I will also forget thy children. But I want to land on that that portion of my people are destroyed for for a lack of knowledge. Um, in, in my journey, or and I'm sure in you all's, uh, you think about this whole light and dark thing, and there's this moment where a light switch is kind of flipped on, like, and you're like, I get it now. I'm finally becoming myself. I, I've had the moments where I've sat down, I've listened, I've done the self-reflection. And then you think about the idea of now that I have the confidence, I have to align my faith with my confidence. When we think about now faith is the substance of things hoped for, some of us are standing in places that we hoped for. <laughs> you know, as, <laughs> as young women, it's like I, I finally made it. Um, Jackie, you said something powerful of taking your faith but not forgetting people. How has you all's faith uh, as believers helped you in the marketplace? Well, I know that's a big one. <laughs> You're like, where do I start? <laughs> I mean, God is, it is through God that we have what we have. Yes. Yeah. And so in our, we start in my house, we get up praying, we leave the house praying Yeah. because we realize that it is through our God's grace that we have what we have, regardless of how much I achieve. I hadn't done anything. Mm -hmm. This is just the conduit. I am the conduit by which God has sent his purpose and plan for me to do work. Mm -hmm. And so, and we, that is part of our culture and our business. And so I, I, although I have a business, I know there are HR things that I have to be mindful of. I cannot change me mm -hmm. and who I am as a person. And my, I, my faith walk comes out in just who I am. And so, and my team, fortunately, have no issues with that. And that gives them the freedom to be themselves mm -hmm. as well. And so we can have a prayer for a moment. If someone needs prayer, we can put business aside and we can do that. And we, we're, we don't, we're not afraid of that. We're not ashamed of that. We don't, we don't think about the HR rules. And I'm sure we're breaking when we're doing that. But, <laughs> you know, but we, we can allow ourselves to be who we are because that's just who we are as people. And it is through um, my faith that I even am still in business. You know, we think about 2020. 2020 was hard, yeah. particularly for business owners, right? Yeah. And so we were so blessed that we did not have to lay off anyone. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, um, we grew our revenue that year. Um, as a marketing, marketing company, people were trying to fight invisibility and people couldn't get out. And so they needed to turn to things like digital marketing to stay seen, but we didn't lay anyone off. Um, and it gave me so much pride to be able to provide an income for my team 
when their family dynamics were shifting, where their spouses were losing their employment and they were the sole source of income. I was like, God, God allowed me with my small company to be a, a resource for this family. And it's a tremendous responsibility that I take very serious. I'm very humbled that God put me in that position. He continues to put me in that position to provide jobs for people in a culture in which they don't have to apologize for being women or for being parents or and having to leave for a soccer game. You don't have to take your vacation time to do that. You can just make up your work later. He's allowed me to create a company with that culture so we can be a blessing for other people. And that's one of the reasons why I founded it. I wanted a place because we had Abby and Abby, um, we don't have any family here. Mm -hmm. And so if I were to work full time for another company, I was going to be subject to missing a lot of her life. Mm -hmm. She would have been in daycare or, or some other programs. And I didn't want that. Yeah. I, I, she didn't have, she didn't have any siblings. I wanted to be present. And so we created the company, but I wanted to create a space for other women to be able to work here too and not feel like they have to choose between being a professional and being a parent. Mm. I was like, here, you can do them both, you know, with no drama, no making you feel bad some kind of way. You can just come in, be you, you know, when you need to uh, step away and do something for your family, go, and I'll see you when you get back. And so I really created that with that express purpose, but it also includes our dads. We have a lot of dads who are primary caretakers and yeah. taking, you know, their kids from a to B, they need that same freedom. And so we have a male employee, he has that same freedom. You know, I need to pick up my child, go do it. See when you get back, not a big deal. But that was one of the things that God has allowed me to do through our business is create a workspace that I wanted to work in that I did not see in the marketplace when it was time for me to do that. Mm -hmm. I think um, in my journey, faith is, is the underlying motivation that keeps me going, right? Like literally I have a little jar in my purse that has a mustard seed in it that kind of keeps me grounded, right? And it makes me, um, when I get kind of beside myself, I pick up the mustard seed, right? Cause I don't have to have much of it. I just have to believe it, right? Yeah. yeah. And um, you know, we deal with several different walks of life, right? So it's not like we have a, a small niche and everybody doesn't believe what you believe, right? But the Lord has allowed us within our company to be able to, um, employ people in, in the same purpose, you know, be able to give them resources so that they can live their life and whatnot. So I'm a butt girl. I'm a, I'm a butt God girl. So anytime things come, it's like, uh-uh, butt God, right? Because mm -hmm. I just need to be paused for just a minute because God's going to handle it. Although my flesh might say one thing, but my butt God spirit says something else, yeah. right? So faith is definitely something that you have to have in my perspective, to even be able to be mindful to manage people. Because when you're managing people, you get all these different personalities, you get all these different characteristics, right? So if you don't have God right there by your side, then it chooses, then it makes you choose to do something that you really shouldn't do. So like I said, managing people, in my opinion, you got to have a whole lot of faith. Oh, tell me <laughs> about it. A whole lot of faith. <laughs> Now, listen, when I came to Mount Zion, Bishop said, you know theology, but you don't know peopleology. <laughs> and probably could have used another word, but nevertheless, <laughs> yes, you're right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> well, I, I guess my sentiments are similar, and I'm so thankful that prior to getting into business uh, that I had a relationship, grew up yes. in the church, had my own faith in God because in business, and particularly the people business, you got to be real tight with Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's just been an amazing journey where now I totally uh, trust that, you know, if it's something I'm supposed to be doing, he will make the provision for me to be able to do that. If it doesn't happen, you know, while it may be a little disappointing, I have to step back and think of his omnipotence yes. that, okay, if it was supposed to happen, it would happen. Or maybe this isn't the right timing. So I put that to the side. So a lot of people I know in business worry about things. And I tell people all the time, I don't worry about things ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I feel God is over here doing his work mm -hmm. and I'm doing the part that I can do. So there's no point in me staying up late, knowing that God is in control, worrying about things that I may not have control over. Uh, so for me, yes, I can't imagine being a successful business person and not having a relationship mm -hmm. with the Lord. 
I just don't know how you would do that. Yeah. Uh, and so it's just been um, an amazing uh, journey alongside, you know, the Lord. Not that I've always made the right decisions, mm -hmm. but I've also been able to learn from the correction of the decisions that I've made. Uh, and so as I've grown and matured, I feel like, you know, now I can be at peace and I don't stress a lot. I might be hot when I'm hot, but I quickly <laughs> yeah. regroup because yes. I, I reflect on that faith and that God is in control mm -hmm. and that if it's for you, no matter what, mm -hmm. no, nobody, nothing can keep that from you. And so being grounded in uh, that perspective and knowing that while faith without work is dead, yes. we're out here working hard and we just have to trust and have faith that God is in control and that he sees the work that we're doing and he's making that provision and leading and guiding and ordering our footsteps. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't get any better than that. Yeah, man, this, this has been great. As we as we wrap up, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about the weight that you all carry. And I, I'm, I'm learning to carry that weight. And Dr. Lakita, you just kind of dismantled my whole question, but I'm going to throw it out there anyway because <laughs> you just ministered to me. Uh, but when you think about the story of Joseph and, and Bishop has taught on this, being responsible for passing out the bread. And you talked about that, you know, in the pandemic, being able to have a business and, and all of you uh, where you're responsible sometimes for the livelihood of others and having that weight on your back. Uh, in fact, as I was even driving here, uh, I just get these these revelations. I was watching uh, an 18 wheeler uh, be tied up to a tow truck. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at the tow truck and I said, that looks like something that would carry my little car. It doesn't look <laughs> like it's something, but you know, it was amazing to see uh, the tow truck person just wrapping that big 18 wheeler up. And I'm like, look at this small thing carrying twice or three times its weight, it's big load. So when you come into these rooms, not as a small person, but as someone who may be unassuming, you're carrying so much uh, on your shoulders. What is that one thing uh, for that person that's watching that's just like, this is a lot. Like I'm on the verge of giving up. I, I don't even know how I can go on. Um, and as you all have ministered to me, I say thank you. Uh, but what is that one thing that keeps you centered? Uh, that maybe it's just going to get ice cream or maybe it's just, you know, just enjoying yourself. What's that one cool thing or maybe faith centered thing that you do just to say, okay, I know I'm carrying a lot, uh, but, but this is how I release. So this is how I get through it. I run. Oh, love it. <laughs> you know, and so during the pandemic, when we couldn't go to the gym, I just started running because yeah. I wanted to, um, you know, stay in, in, stay in shape. And so I started with just a half mile and now I'm up to seven. And so wow. I ran a marathon last year, and that was my first one. It was the Wonder Woman run. And Wonder Woman is my favorite superhero, so it's perfect. <laughs> so I did the Wonder Woman run, but set up to seven miles. And it, for me, it is such a spiritual, God has saved me so many. I remember once I was running, and for some some reason, some kind of way, I tripped, but I don't know what on, on what. I didn't see it. But... If I would have failed the way that I was, my momentum was going, it could have been, I don't know, it, all of this could have been gone. <laughs> <laughs> but for some, God caught me, I felt it. Mm -hmm. He caught me just like that. And I ended up, I sat on the grass. Mm -hmm. It was just, he met me. And so I was like, I touched God today. Mm -hmm. And I came home, I was so excited. And once people were like, Jackie, you, I mean, stop laughing. Like you almost failed. I'm like, y'all missing the point. I, I literally felt God catch me. Mm -hmm. And he pushed me over and laid me on the ground. Mm -hmm. And that is what that is for me. And so now running is one of the best parts of my week, because that is me and God talking about different things, just like we're having a conversation. He's downloading into me and it's coming out through my legs and I'm trucking. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'm on Church Street. Now I'm over there about Belmont. And so it's running for me. I love it. I love it. Um, For me, it's a spa day. Yes. It's, it's a spa day. It's a spa day for me to just hush the noise, right? Um, Sundays are great, right? Because you can actually have that time with God and, and your peers. Um, but spa days actually allow me just to be calm, release, hear from God. Um, and it's just me, you know, 
so many other times, you know, it's never just me. You know, I have a husband, I have kids, you know, I have a dad that I take care of. Um, you have all these employees that you're responsible for. So you really, for me, it's never any me time. You know, it's always mm -hmm. this, this, that. And I don't mind because some of that is my gift as well. You know, um, I want to help. And God has allowed me to be able to pour that gift out. But um, so for me, it's a spa day. I love it. Well, all of that. <laughs> um, and some, right? And some. <laughs> I love music, but I spend a lot of time in the car. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's my stillness, quiet time. It, it, can you imagine that in traffic? <laughs> yeah. But I feel like we have a lot of conversations in the, you know, confines of can't be anywhere else because I'm stuck in this car. <laughs> um, and I get a lot of revelations. I get a lot of insight as to like if I'm dealing with an issue, mm -hmm. it's almost like I can hear his voice and we're having this exchange of dialogue mm -hmm. uh, in this quiet stillness because in every other setting, I'm around people all the time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it, it, it brings a lot of noise. Uh, but I will find stillness sitting in traffic, driving, and by the time I get where I'm going, a lot of times I've even, you know, have a bunch of notes or I've text myself when I stop to make sure that I don't lose those thoughts in those moments. Mm -hmm. uh, and I feel like, okay, then when I get out of that car, I am ready. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you, ladies, so much. As we come to the conclusion, it, it's clear that three things that we've learned from this conversation if you're taking notes, that's to have humility, to understand your what, that's to have anticipation, and that's understanding your work. What is it that you're called to do? And then that's growth, understanding your why. Because sometimes the trials we face help us to understand the why behind the what the why God is calling you into what you're going to do. And so I wanna say thank you ladies for this conversation. Listen, if you need to go back and watch the replay, I want you to do that. But I wanna end this deeper dive a little bit differently for Women's Her Story Month. I want you to put someone in the chat, a woman in your life uh, who has blessed you. Why don't you go ahead and take a few moments and just brag on them in the chat and maybe even send them a text message just to say thank you, to celebrate them for what they've done. This has been an amazing two-part series of Her Story. I hope you enjoyed even in the video announcements at church. And we're looking forward to what God is going to do even next uh, month. And so before we get into that, if you have been touched by this Deeper Dive uh, series, if you say there's, I want to get to know Christ, I want a deeper relationship, I want the faith that these ladies have shared today, all you've got to do is text SALVATION to 78228 and there our team will connect with you, they will pray with you, they will walk with you. You're not on this journey alone. We all started somewhere and we're just walking into the revelation of who God has called us to be. So I want you to do that if you feel led, but we're looking forward to next month, even as we're celebrating our Bishop's Anniversary Month. Bishop will be back for Deeper Dive. There's some cool things that are gonna happen in the month of April. We want you to be a part. We want you to stay locked in. Again, I'm Pastor Diamond, and until we meet next time, may God bless you, may God keep you, is our prayer.